Here it is, Battlefield 5, the highly anticipated sequel to the amazing Battlefield 1. So let's spend a couple of minutes talking about BF1. Battlefield 1 took us on this amazing single and multiplayer adventure across the maps of World War 1, confounding the skeptics who thought that you couldn't make a shooter based on the Great War and that it wouldn't be any good. Who can forget the introduction to the solo war stories where we fought as a Harlem Hellfighter, or the multiplayer battles where we fought across the fields of San Quentin Scar, the deserts of Sinai, or the apocalyptic landscapes of Passchendaele. I put over 600 hours into Battlefield 1, and the thought of DICE, who developed Battlefield 1, taking that game to World War 2 filled me with even more excitement. The gameplay of Battlefield 1, but with Spitfires overhead, Tiger tanks crashing through the hedgerows, and a Sten gun in my hand just sounded amazing. If I thought that Battlefield 1 was the greatest respawn multiplayer shooter of this generation, then Battlefield 5 could be the greatest respawn shooter of all time. After playing 10 hours of Battlefield 5 though, I've got to say that unfortunately this game doesn't reach those heights. Battlefield 5 is a good shooter. Hey, it's a great shooter. But DICE have taken some crazy decisions that actually remove some of the fun from the core gameplay, and they've pandered to social justice in a way that breaks the immersion in the game. So let's address that elephant in the room straight away, the woman in Battlefield 5. Now, when this issue first came up, when they had a woman on the cover of the game, people were all saying, including myself, look, women did fight and die in World War II. There were Russian snipers. There were th tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of women working in the armed services, de delivering aeroplanes, driving trucks, manning anti-aircraft guns. They all paid and played a key role in defeating the Germans. There was many, many gallant British OSS women who lost their lives in occupied territories. There were thousands of French, Polish, Greek, and Russian women resistance fighters who fought and died in the war. But I'm pretty sure that there were no women serving in frontline British combat units. And I'm damn sure there were no women serving in German Wehrmacht combat army units. Now, I know this is a video game, and that if a girl wants to play as a girl in that video game, then they should be allowed to. But if DICE and EA are saying that Battlefield 5 is an immersive World War II experience, they're lying. When I'm fighting as a British soldier and I shoot an enemy in a German uniform and I hear a woman scream, that's just wrong in World War II and it breaks that immersion. It breaks the feeling that you're back in 1940 fighting off the German Blitzkrieg. Now, does this really spoil the game? Not completely, but DICE could have done it a different way, you know, they could have had the women just be dressed up differently. You know, they could have been dressed up as resistance fighters, or they could have been dressed up as OSS operatives. Just to give us that little bit of feeling of, yes, this is could still be a World War II battle. Instead of at the moment where you've got, you've got like, the, the male soldiers, and then you've just got, like, these women soldiers who just, like, they're... They're just dressing up and playing a game, and it just isn't immersive at all. And while we're on that subject of immersion as well, come on, Dice, why do the British, why do the Allies side have the ability to call in a V1 rocket? You know what, couldn't you have given us something else? Couldn't you have had us the ability to call in, like, a Lancaster bomber to do the same thing, or a Mosquito to come in and drop a few bombs? Not a V1. You know, <laughs> they just, it's just, it's just, just wrong. So... Let's talk about the gameplay in Battlefield 5. In Battlefield 5, what they've done is they've taken away most of the spotting. So it's difficult to identify enemies at range or keep an eye on where people are going. And for me, spotting was always a really good idea in Battlefield because unless you're in squad chats, you've got no way of telling your teammates where the enemies are. But spotting allowed you to do that. With it removed, firefights often descended to chaos, where you simply don't know where the enemies are. When, of course, in real life, you'd always shout into each other, and yeah, they're over there behind the hedgerow north. And we can't all be in group chat, because lots of the time, we might be playing with people who don't even speak the same language as us. To compound this, DICE have decided to make the kill cam a lot less obvious. So when you get killed by somebody, you don't really know where they are. You do get like this fuzzy red outline that you can kind of see sometimes. 
But what this means is that rewards this kind of camping style of gameplay, staying near the sides of the back of the map with a massive scope and just picking people off and staying there because we don't know where they are because we can't spot them and we can't see them on our kill cam. And finally, dice have introduced scarcity and attrition, which means that when you spawn in with limited ammo, um, you also can't heal yourself. You've got to visit supply stations or get a medic or a support player to give you health and ammo packs. And for me, this is just another crazy idea. You know, I play Battlefield to shoot people. That's how I have fun in this game. Yet dice are taking that away by making me spawn in with two measly magazines of ammo, which is nowhere near enough to sustain an aggressive push into enemy territory to take enemy flags. Sure. I know DICE say that this is here to encourage more tactical play, but honestly, there's got to be a better way of doing this in a shooter than taking away the bullets that I use to shoot people with. Okay, so there is actually one more thing as well, and it's the fact that we're going into the full release of this game with no Firestorm, no Battle Royale. The biggest games of the last 18 months have been Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Fortnite and Call of Duty with its Battle Royale mode. And we're not getting it until a long time in the future. We're not getting it until next year. Which I know you could say that's the right decision to do. If it's not ready, it's not ready. But it should be ready. You know, this is very, very important. But let's talk about the good stuff now. Okay, so in Battlefield 5, grenades are a lot less of a problem. We know in Battlefield 1, if you're an assault player, you could sp you spawned in with, what with was it two or three anti-tank grenades and a normal grenade as well and there was grenade spam everywhere and it was a real nightmare when you're trying to take flags but grenades are more like concussion grenades now even the frags the scoring is better as well we've gone to a system where when you're playing conquest games go down to the wire a lot more options we now have grand operations which is a mixture of um of rush and uh front lines and uh, conquest and it is very interesting obviously the locations are really good you know the fact that we're fighting in world war ii uh, maps maybe not the obvious ones but they are and they look good the vehicles look great as well the spitfires the me 109s the tiger tanks the churchill tanks they look good the weapons are good as well i've said this they've got the sten gun you've got the lewis gun now some of these guns were in battlefield one but they're great in battlefield uh five the gunplay you know, the gunplay feels good. It feels great to shoot people. Probably a little bit less random than it was in Battlefield 1. And now we also have weapon pr progression, which I know you, you could take either way, but it does make it quite interesting that you can choose how your Sten gun can behave. You know, you could have it as a close range monster or you could change the progression so that it's better at range. The maps themselves, at the moment, I can only really say that they're, they're good. They're interesting to play, but it's too early. You know, I, I, I haven't played enough of them for long enough to say, yet. Yeah, there, there's some really great maps here. But I've had some really good battlefield encounters with armoured vehicles coming past and aeroplanes crashing and all that sort of stuff. The sound, this sound is brilliant. You know, everything from the muffled sounds of, of radios and the, the sound of the, the engines of the aircraft and the tanks, it all sounds really good. The graphics, you know, oh, the graphics in Battlefield 5, they're better than Battlefield 1. We've got more detail. The multiplayer has got closer to the detail that we see in the best of the solo war stories. Better than Call of Duty and way better than Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. We're talking the best graphics you've ever seen in a shooter. So, Battlefield 5 has great gunplay, amazing sound, and it's the best looking Battlefield to date yet. Because of the immersion issue, because of the lack of spotting, because of the ammo issue, this game isn't as good as it could have been. This game sounds better, and it looks better than Battlefield 1, and the gunplay arguably is better too, but because of these idiotic changes overall, Battlefield 5 is not better than Battlefield 1. Now, I'm sure we'll see Dice Plate put in many of changes after release, but what you really want to know is, should you buy Battlefield 5? Should you invest your hard-earned money, and more importantly, your hard-earned time in this game? And the answer is, if you're a big Battlefield 5 fan, of course. You know, if you play Battlefield um, every year, 
um, and mostly have ignored PUBG and Call of Duty and played Battlefield 1 right up to the release of Battlefield 5, then, you know, this game's a must-buy. You'll adjust to the changes and you'll have a blast playing the game. If, however, you're really enjoying Call of Duty this year, or, you know, you're really enjoying playing around those Battlegrounds, then it's a more difficult answer because at this moment, I'd say this game isn't as good as Battlefield 1. And therefore isn't a must buy because you can play Battlefield 1 when you want and you can also play Call of Duty and or play around those battlegrounds. So there we have it. If you're a big Battlefield fan who constantly plays Battlefield, then Battlefield 5 is definitely for you. If you're not though, if the delights of Call of Duty or PUBG are taking up your time, I'd say wait. Look at the other reviews. Wait for my full review after I put dozens of hours in, not just 10, into this game and see what I think then because I've already bought the game and therefore I will be putting an awful lot of game into it. Watch more footage and see if the gameplay appeals to you and then make a decision. Okay, that's enough from me. Put your questions and comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. Thank you very much and I will see you again soon.